Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 60 in our incredible tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And I am also going to need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear. And as you are getting out your gear, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my pa Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we are going to do today because we have got an exciting lesson and it kind of continues in the theme of the last few lessons where we're starting to try to interact more with the outside world. And in the last few lessons, we've learned how to use the GPIO pins. We've learned how to read a value from the GPIO pins. We've learned how to output to the GPIO pins and we've learned how to do PWM pulse width modulation. That allows us to interact with sensors and actuators so that we can become more interactive. What we are going to learn today is how to become even more interactive by teaching the Nano to talk. Yes, today we are going to do text-to-speech. But before I jump in, I want to show you one thing that's kind of coming down the pipe at after we do the the uh, the talking part, after we get the Jetson Nano talking. In future lessons, this is a cool thing that we are going to do, and I will show it to you here. Do you know what this is? This is a little Raspberry Pi Zero, and inside of this little case, I have a Raspberry Pi Zero and a Pi camera and then attached to it I have just a very simple little uh, USB power bank okay so this whole thing notice look mom no wires look mom no wires and what can we do with this well if we come over here and I believe I need to look for my program I believe this is it let's see if I can fire up this program and show you what this does Hopefully it will run. Boom! Look at that. I'll get out of your way. Streaming IP camera. Uh-huh. Look at that. Let's check the latency. One, two, three. That's about as close to no latency as I could get. One, two, three, four, five. And we are streaming wirelessly. Now the really cool thing is this little kit, the Raspberry Pi Zero itself cost about 10 bucks, but you can get the whole kit for $30. It includes all the cables and connectors that you need to get started, and it includes the little case. Now it doesn't include the Raspberry Pi camera, but you can pick up a version 1 camera for about 10 bucks, or if you really want a better one, you can get the, uh, the version 2 camera for about $20, $25. And then you will need some sort of little USB battery uh, pack in order to be able to do this. You can either use the one that I'm using here, or you can use one that you already have. But this is kind of what I see the direction that we will be going in the future, is we will become un untethered and you could imagine with these little low-cost cameras like this we could put them all over the place and we could be doing all types of neat things like you could imagine this could be out in a remote location it could be sending back to us the live video and then we can do the image rec recognition the face detection the object detection the object recognition recognition we could do all of that from little remote cameras and you could imagine that we could set up more than one remote camera because those things are fairly low cost. But I digress, but I just want to give you guys a heads up. Look down in the description. I have links over to this hardware that I'm using and you might want to go ahead and order the hardware so when we get to these lessons in a few weeks you'll be set up and ready to go. Okay, but enough of this getting sidetracked with stuff that has nothing at all to do with teaching 
the Jetson Nano to talk. And so we're just going to jump right in and do that. But in order to do that, we are going to have to install a couple of libraries. And so I am going to come over and open up a terminal window. And the first thing that we will need to install is some software that will allow us to do the text to speech. Now I should emphasize in today's lesson, we're looking at text to speech, where we could take text and then the Nano says those words. And that's kind of neat because then like if we have the facial recognition it could say hello Mr. Phelps welcome you see it could you could speak a personal message to the person based on recognizing who they are and so I think that just adds some really exciting capability and so we will need to install a package with sudo apt get install eSpeak eSpeak like that Let's see if that works. Okay, looks like it's going to be happy. I always like it when this stuff happens. I hate it when it kind of stops like it is now, but I think we'll be okay. Ah, that went, uh, that went pretty quickly. All right, so now we will come over and we will start coding by calling up the most excellent Visual Studio code. We will look at our file explorer. I think I'm going to keep working in my GPIO folder just because this is kind of input output stuff. And I am going to create a new file called nano talk.py. The .py is kind of important. And we're going to jump in and start coding. <clears throat> the first thing that we will need to do is we will need to get that where you have a better view. I think you can see everything pretty well there. Okay, we're going to import the OS, the kind of operating system library that will allow us to actually generate the sound in a minute. And I almost forgot I should tell you, you need some sort of sound device on your Nano. What I have is I have speakers in my monitor. So for me, I select HDMI display port built-in audio. So that is the audio that's going out my HDMI cable and my monitor has speakers. All right. If you don't have a monitor with speakers, the next best option would be any type of USB based speakers like there's some USB headsets or there's some USB speakers most all of those should work but you would select something different here okay and so that looks good so I should now have a way of getting sound out you'll have to figure out what with your hardware would be the best way for you to do it but then we import OS now we need to import our text to speech library which is PYTTSX3 and that should already be on your system so that should do it. Now we need to create our speech engine. So I will call it engine is equal to PYTTSX3.init like that. That's pretty easy. And now we need to put in the text that we want it to say. So I will just say text is equal to, let's say, get ready player one the play the play will be rough are you ready to rumble an exclamation point i don't know if it recognizes exc exclamation points or not but i'll put it in there okay now what we need to do is we need to say engine dot say and this will create the sound and so we do engine.say, what do we want to say? We want to say the text that we just put in, okay? Now that creates the sound file, but now we got to kind of play it. And we do that with engine, in, engine dot run and wait. And notice the capitalization is important there. Run and wait, that looks good. And uh, could it be that easy? Could it really be that easy? Let's right mouse click and say run. I hope you can hear it because my monitor isn't really loud, but let's try it. Listen carefully. Woo, engine is not defined because I misspelled it. Hopefully you guys caught that. Let's try it again. <clears throat> Okay, boom. 
we got it. Now, what did I not like? I li didn't like that he was talking a little bit too fast, so I'm going to try to slow him down. And so uh, after initializing the engine, I'm going to say engine.setProperty, and then I'm going to set a rate, okay, like that, of 150. And let's see if that will slow him down a little bit. Okay, I think that is a lot better. Now there's a few limited selection of voices that you can play with. And so let's see if we can set it to a different voice. So I'm going to say engine dot set property, engine dot set property, and I want to set the property voice. And then what I want to set it to is English dash, I'm going to say our English plus M1 for the male voice one. Now it might have already been male voice one, but let's see if we can see a difference. Yeah, that was a little different. They all seem to have a little bit of a British Australian accent. Okay, I think there's four different ones, so let's try them all here. Okay, let's go to four. Okay, I could tell a difference, but I couldn't tell like a big difference, like none that I really preferred. Okay, and there's also female voices, so let's see if we can listen to the female voices by putting an F here. Okay, the two female. I like two better than one, but you can play around uh, M1 through 4, F1 through 4, and you can pick the one that you like the best. You can play around with the speed. I think a couple of you guys out there are already playing with this. You might know more than I do about this. Okay, what do I like about this? I like it that it is very easy to use. I like it that I can choose different voices, and I like it that uh, it's just a few lines of code, and I've got some ability to play around with the parameters. That's what I like. Okay, what do I not like? The voice sounds very artificial and very computer-generated, and I am sorry it just does not sound very human. So, never fear, I'm going to show you a second way to do this. And then we're going to compare and contrast. There's like, <laughs> and there's probably going to be a lot of disagreement about, but there's, this way has one very distinct advantage. The other way has another very distinct advantage. And so it just depends on what you, what's important to you. There's, I have a really strong opinion about something. So we'll see if you guys agree with me or you disagree with me. But let's create another file. Let me save this one. Uh, and now let's create another one. And what I'm going to call this is, I'm going to call this Nano Talk. I'm going to call this Nano Talk. And uh, Nano Talk, and I'm going to call it gtts.py, like that. Okay, got a new one. <clears throat> and now I'm going to have to install a few libraries again. And so we will call this up, and I'm going to need to sudo apt install. Notice that it's not app get this time. It's just sudo apt install mpg123 mpg123 like that. Okay. And it is going to go install this little uh, <coughs> system utility. Okay, that didn't take long. And now what I am also going to need to install is GTTS. And so that will be a sudo, and we will install this with pip3, sudo pip3 install GTTS, like that. Always that little bit of tension while it just sits there and doesn't do anything. We want to see it out churning around, which it's not doing yet. But 
I feel pretty confident in my typing skills for something that simple. So it is just a matter of giving it a second and it will go out and get it. You guys, do you have yours already talking in the first way? Have you talked? Have you made it talk yet? I think that's a pretty big step forward in our work. Okay. It is, okay. It looks like it is done. Okay, that looks like it's done. So we should, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hop over here and I'm going to start coding now. And this is not that much more complicated than what our first one was. And so I will just show you the commands. Okay, for this one, what we need to do is we need to start by importing the OS utilities. That's kind of like the operating system utilities. It's got something in there we're going to need. And then we're going to say from gtts all lowercase import little g and then uppercase tts so import gtts or from gtts import gtts but pay attention to the case the capitalization because it is important now we need to get our text again so i'm going to say my text is equal to get ready player one the play will be rough. Are you ready to rumble? Did you see that movie Ready Player One? I usually don't watch movies, but I was on an airplane kind of stuck for 30 hours, you know, long overseas flight. And I, this was one of the movies I watched, and I really actually kind of liked it. And so I don't know why I say the play will be rough, but it just kind of is creepy when a computer is saying something like this. So anyway, I find it sort of interesting. Okay, so we've got my text in there. <clears throat> now we need to create my output. And you can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call mine my output. And I get that with it being equal to little g tts, like Google text to speech I think is what that is and then the text is equal to my text okay and the language LANG is going to be equal to EN for English and then we want to say slow equal false we don't want it to go slow so we say slow is equal to false and then we can say my that creates the sound so then we take that my output and believe it or not you know what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to dot save it and where do we want to save it to talk.mp3 now if you don't put a path it'll just put it in your default folder and if you are on visual studio like i am it's kind of like my default folder is pi pro but if for any reason you can't find where it went, just go in and put the path, and then when you load it, put the path. Okay, by this point, by lesson number 60, you should understand Linux paths, I do believe. Okay, so that will save it. And now I need to do just an os.system, okay? And then inside of a quote, I need to go to that utility mpg123, and then I need to do talk dot mp3 and if you put a path in the line above you need to put a path here and those two paths should match but if I don't put a path it should just put it in my pi pro folder and it should be good to go okay so that should say it I do believe and so could it be that easy six lines of code let's see right mouse click run python file and terminal Giddy up. All right, man, we've got it talking two ways, two ways. Now tell me what you really like about this. Tell me what you really like about this. Get ready, player one. The play will be rough. Are you ready to rumble? Okay. What you really like about this is the voice quality is much, much better. It's almost approaching human quality. And the intonations and so forth, it is very, very high quality speech. Like, you know, I'm kind of blown away that we're able to do computer generated speech that's this good. So now let's compare the first method with the second method. Okay, ease of use. First method is very easy. Second method is very easy. 
Okay, pros and cons on how many parameters, how much flexibility do you have in adjusting things? The first one, we could adjust the speed, we could adjust the voice, we had some handles that we could play with that voice, that's a plus. The downside of this one is I couldn't figure out anything, like I couldn't get, you know, an Australian accent or I couldn't like choose a different voice, get a French accent or something couldn't choose that here. All I could figure out was just have it say in its one voice. And the only thing really that you could do is true or false on slow. And so really no parameters. So a little bit of an edge to the uh, to the first one. OK, but as far as voice quality, human like clarity in the voice, this one just blows away the first one. This one really, really blows away the first one. So if it's a great voice and it's easy to use and it's a better voice than the first one, then this one hands down is the winner, right? Not quite, because this was the this was the devastating thing to me about this one. This one only works if you're hooked to the internet. So it's almost a little bit like Siri. It's almost like it's sending the text up to the mothership and then the mothership is sending you back your little packet of the sound wave. And so it really, really, really bugs me that this is really being done remotely if you dig into it. And I know some of you guys are going to say, oh, well, I've got internet, so I don't care. I'll just use this. Yeah, but to me, it's a principle of a thing. I got this Jitsa Nano so that I could do artificial intelligence and I could code things up. And once you tether yourself back to the mothership, you might as well just be using Siri, right? You kind of like you're not doing it yourself. So I'm kind of like a do things from scratch scratch kind of guy and so I am really disappointed very very disappointed in this one and so even though the voice quality is uh, is quite a bit better with this one I am really inclined to go back and use the uh, use the first one just because I've got it all you know kind of like in my computer it does everything in my computer so you guys leave comments down below let me know what you think does uh, you know which which thing do you see moving forward okay now I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna go and see if our little camera is still working okay it's been about 30 minutes probably is that is it still working or does it die after a few minutes and then the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give you your, your homework assignment for next week. So your homework assignment for next week is to use your newly learned <coughs> speech capability and to combine that with the image recognition program we did a few weeks ago. And remember, image recognition is different than object detection. Remember, object detection looks at the room and it boxes and labels all the things that it sees in the room. That's object detection. Image recognition is where you have a clear scene and you put something in the scene and it recognizes it. It's not having to figure out where it is and find it. It just recognizes kind of the dominant thing that it sees in the picture so this would be like pill bottle okay and then what I want you to do is audibly say what it is that it sees and you've got to do it in a way that's not annoying now what would be a very simple thing to do okay number one it's got to not be annoying and number two you've got to not mess up your smooth video so this would be something that would not be a good grade like if I put it up there it says Pill bottle, 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 pill bottle. That would be annoying. You want to say pill bottle, blue marker. Okay. And then also you don't want it to say pill bottle vase, pill bottle vase, face, face, pill bottle. Okay. So there's a couple of things that that would mean. That would mean that you need to have it sort of say things once when it recognizes and also sometimes when it's wrong like if it's not sure what it is and you put this up here and said paintbrush it might say you don't want it to say paintbrush unless it really knows it's a paintbrush you've got to incorporate into it a little bit having to do with the confidence okay and so just because like it 
10% sure that this is a paintbrush, you don't want to say paintbrush. You only want to say you only want to say the words if it's fairly confident that it knows what it is seeing. And so that's two things. Don't be annoying. Don't say wrong things. And then the third thing is you can't mess up your video. So let's say that you are moving uh, you are moving things around and then it starts to speak and then it's pill bottle. You can't freeze the video pill bottle while you're speaking. You've got to speak as the video continues. Okay, so you've got to incorporate this without locking the camera out. Okay, so at first glance this seems pretty simple, but I will tell you with the stuff that you've learned in the earlier 59 lessons, you have everything you need to know in order to make this go well. Okay, you guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making these lessons. I really look forward to the premiere. I love chatting with you guys as we're having our, our morning coffees on Saturday, and then I love seeing your comments later. And so if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up if you've not subscribed to the channel already make sure to hit subscribe when you do ring that bell so you will get notifications of my future lessons and think about sharing this on uh, social media if you guys want to hook up with me on Twitter I'm Paul J McWhorter on Twitter on Facebook I am Paul space and Anna space McWhorter Paul and Anna McWhorter and uh, you know I'm not able to answer every message because I have 150,000 subscribers but if you want to sort of follow and see things that I have going on away from work you can hook up with me on Facebook or more recently I got on Gab and I tell you I really like Gab I like Gab a lot better than Twitter and see so might check that out on Paul McWhorter on Gab all right guys I have had a lot of fun with this and and uh, I hope you I hope you're enjoying these lessons. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.